So in my previous video, I created a project to detect the air humidity for my garden plants, and I briefed about an extension to that project so that we can turn on the water sprinklers when it gets too dry. Well, with the technology called IFT and connecting it to Python, we can actually do that. So let's get into it. All right, so first of all, what are we gonna do in today's video? Well, first of all, if you guys haven't watched my other video on the Humature Sensor project, project, then I'll brief about that. Then we'll get into what actually is the technology called IFT. And then I'll show you guys what we're gonna do in today's project. And then we're gonna get straight into the demo in which we're gonna be connecting Python to IFT. So let's get into it. All right, so first of all, what is the Humature Sensor project? And if you're gonna follow along this whole project, then I'd recommend you check out that video first because there's a bunch of code from that video that we're using today. So basically what we did was, in my Raspberry Pi, I have a humidity sensor, which gets the temperature and the humidity, and I got all of that humidity data to go to Python, and first of all, we printed it out, and then I visualized the data with a flask page and a progress bar, showing the percentage of humidity in the air. So now, I wanna take it a step further, and I'll detect using my Python program, I'm going to detect when the humidity is low, and then with if it's low, then I'm going to run an if trigger so that I can turn on the sprinklers in my lawn. Okay, so now let's check out if. And if you don't know what if is, then I have a whole nother introduction video to that, link in the description down below. But basically, if stands for if this then that. And it connects specific apps and devices, and it has a bunch of different apps and devices you can connect to. And how it works is you can customize the trigger and the action. Those are the two main parts. So the trigger is just like the name implies, it's a trigger. So basically if a certain event happens that you can customize, then it should run the specific action that you tell it to. In this case, we want the trigger to be that, for example, if the humidity level is lower than a certain amount, then we want the action to be that it'll run the sprinklers. So yeah, now let's get into today's project. Like I said, it's gonna check for a specific number on our using our humidity data, and then we're gonna connect IFT to our sprinkler connection, but since we can't really use the humidity data straight in IFT, we're going to use it in Python, and we can connect IFT to Python using a thing called webhooks. So let's get straight into the interactive demo so that we can actually do all this stuff. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to ift.com. And ift.com, this is the website that we're gonna be using to create our applet. And applets are just like the little mini projects that you create with ift. So here, if I go to the top right corner, obviously you're gonna to have to create an account and it's completely free. So if I go to my applets here, then as you can see, I already have three applets from the last video that we created. But now, what I'm gonna do is on the top right corner, it says to create here. So I'm gonna press create so that we can create our own applet. And then here, as you can see, it says if this, then that, that's the name. So then the if this, that would be the trigger. So I'm gonna add a trigger here. And then as you can see, it has all of these technologies that you can connect to. There's quite a lot. So like I said before, we wanna connect if to Python because the trigger is going to be in Python itself. So how we can connect it to Python is with a thing called webhooks. So I'm gonna search up webhooks, and webhooks are basically a trigger that's saying, if you call this API from the web, then it should run the action. And in this case, we're going to be using a library so that we can actually run this webhook. So I'm gonna press webhooks here, and then there's two options, receive a request with a JSON payload or just receive a web request. And in, in this case, since we don't really have any data to give it, we're actually giving the data using the Python code. I'm just gonna say receive a web request. And then for the event name, this is very important and you have to remember this because we're gonna be using it in our Python code. So in this case for the event name, maybe I'll say water lawn. And then I'm gonna create that trigger. So as you can see, here's the trigger. If we receive a web request, then we need to add an action. And in this case, the action is going to be that we wanna connect our water sprinklers to be on. So I'm gonna press add here. And I have a water sprinkler called Ratio, and that's the technology. I don't really know how to pronounce it. So I'm gonna press that. And then here, I'm going to say start a zone because that will just start a specific watering zone because we can't really have the humidity sensor everywhere. We just wanna have it in one place. And then for that zone, then we can start. So I'm gonna press start a zone. 
and then for the Ratchio account, I already have the account. And then which zone? I already configured all of my zones here. Now all we have to do is just check whichever one we want. In this case, let's say I put the Raspberry Pi in the backyard, then I'll just put it to that zone. And then how many minutes to water? I'm just gonna say one because this is just a demo. And then I'm gonna press create action. So now, what it should do is, if we call the web request using our Python program, which we're gonna do, then it should start the zone in our backyard. So there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna press continue, and then this is the applet title. I'm gonna rename this to water lawn python humidity. And then press finish. And yeah, so now we have our if. So now we have our ift applet, and this is, will all work just fine. But since we don't have the trigger to be s configured with the Raspberry Pi, we need to do that by connecting to our Raspberry Pi and running all the code. So how I'm going to do that is, now I'm going to go to VNC Viewer so that we can remote into our Raspberry Pi and then work with the code. Let me just drag it over here. And then I already have configured the connection details, but if this is your first time, you're going to need to set that up. So here I'm going to press RPI new. That's my connection to my Raspberry Pi. So now it should open up our Raspberry Pi and remote into it. And then, yeah, as you can see, I already have the code from my last video in which we just created the Flask app to visualize the humidity data. But now we want to take that data and then use it as a parameter for our ift webhook. So the first thing we have to do to actually run an ift webhook, and you don't have to do this in Raspberry Pi. If you're here just for the ift connection to Python, then all you have to do is use this module. You can do it in your local computer as well. Okay, so the import that we're going to be using, first of all, let me import this module. So the module is from ifttt or ift underscore webhook import let me let that load. Again, it's a little bit laggy because we're on a Raspberry Pi. It's a small computer. And then we want to import the module called ift webhook. And well, now that we've imported it, we're also going to need some credentials so that we can actually use it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So how do we get those credentials? Well, you have to go to a certain link to get your to get your API key. So the link is https ift.com slash makerwebhooks. And this link will be in the description if you need it. And then you're gonna have to press documentation down here. And then here you can see your key. So now this will let us actually use our API key in our program. So now I'm gonna create a variable called ift key. You can call it whatever you want. And then in, in that variable, you're gonna have to put the string. And then that string is going to be the API key. And then now I've copy pasted it, but then next, what you're gonna have to do is create another variable. And now this is just a string, but we need to tell if that, hey, this is my actual API key. So how we do that is I'm gonna make another variable called I IFTTT, and then that's gonna be equal to, and then we're gonna use that ift webhook module that we imported, and then IFTTT webhook. And then that's gonna, we're gonna use it as a function. And then for the key, we're going to use this variable that we have here. So inside the function, I'm gonna paste the key. And yeah, that's all the credentials that you're gonna need for now. And then now we're gonna be using this if variable whenever we wanna run a trigger of a webhook. So now I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom of the program so that we can actually write the bulk of the code. All right, so now to actually run the webhook, I'm going to use a function. So I'm just gonna do this under the print humidity here, although we're gonna change that later because we'll run into a problem after that. Okay, so here to run it, I'm going to use our if variable and then we're gonna say if dot trigger and then we're gonna use the trigger function and then, oh, okay, wait, I didn't add a s enter here. Yeah, as you can see, it's very laggy and slow because it's a Raspberry Pi, but that's fine. Okay, so then inside of the if.trigger variable, we're going to have to run a specific trigger. And this is where the event name, if you remember when we created our webhook, or when we created our applet, we had that event name that we called it water lawn. Yeah, I think we called it water lawn. Let me just go back and check. Um, water lawn. Let's press settings, and then that should let us check. Yeah, water lawn. Okay, 
So then that would be the event name. And then after that, you're going to have to provide three more parameters. And now this will vary whether you want to add some stuff in here. This will vary based on if you actually have parameters you need to provide. But in this case, I don't have many other parameters other than the zone maybe. So here I'm going to paste in. You just have to say value 1, value 2, and value 3. And then those are the last parameters. You have to add them, but you don't necessarily have to have anything inside of them. So in this case, for value one, I'm just going to add as the parameter the zone, just in case it needs to know that. And then we're going to save that. And now when we run it, it should trigger the lawn and it should start the sprinkler. But since it's in a while loop and it's since it's in the if result loop, then it should keep on looping and it should keep on running, which I don't want that to happen forever. So I'm not going to run it just yet. But how we can per how we can stop that is Again, we want it to be an if in an if command saying that like if the humidity is less than this amount, then we want it to trigger. So I'm going to add that here. So in the if result here, I'm going to add an, another if command saying if the int of humidity and we're going to use the int function because the humidity comes in a string. So if the integer value of humidity, which is our variable, which gets the percentage of humidity. So if that is like less than or equal to maybe the correct amount that I would put maybe like 35 40 but since we're in a controlled environment since we're inside and since I don't have a dehumidifier it's gonna be pretty hard to make it dry so that we can actually test this out so just for the sake of this video I'm gonna make it above like 80 so that we can actually change it because if you put your finger on it then it becomes more moist and then it um, goes up so for the sake of this video, I'm going to say maybe like above, greater than or equal to 80. All right, so there we go. Now, if the humidity is above, greater than or equal to 80, then it should start the water in the backyard. It should start the, it should run the trigger and start the sprinkler. But again, since we're still in a loop, then it's going to keep on running over and over again. And I don't want that to happen because otherwise it'll keep on running the water forever, which is bad. So how we can stop that is, let's say we just watered the lawn and then it becomes dry again. We don't want it to keep on watering because the plants would already be just fine. So how we can stop that is we can check the last time we watered it. And then if it's above an hour, then we can run the sprinklers. If it hasn't even been an hour since we last ran the water, then we shouldn't keep on running it over and over again. So how we can do that is I'm going to create a variable called last water, and that'll just get us the time that we last watered our lawn. So here I'm going to create a variable called last water. I'm going to initialize it as just yesterday so that we can keep on changing it every time we water the lawn. So I'm going to paste in this code and basically what it does is it just gets the value of yesterday. So we have date time dot now, which is today, and then minus one day, which is yesterday. So we've initialized this as yesterday. And then another thing I'm going to do is from date time, I'm going to import date, date time and dot time delta because those are three functions and three modules that we're going to be using in today's video. So then I'm going to go back down. And the next thing we want to do is I want to check if it's been over an hour since we last watered it. So how we can do that is inside of the if int humidity is greater than or equal to 80, we can add another if command saying that like if it's been more than an hour since we last watered it, then it can run the if webhook so that it can actually start watering the lawn. So how do we do that? Well, since I've already initialized the variable of the last water, then we can just check the difference between the time right now and the time since we last watered it. And then if it's greater than one, which is one hour, then it should run it. So I'm going to do that right now. So first thing we want to do is type in if, and then to get the date time right now, I'm going to use the date time function. So I'm going to say date time dot now, and then let's just let that load. So date time dot now. So now if that minus last water, which is our variable here, if that minus last water, and then we're going to get the total seconds of that because that's how you actually get it. Otherwise it wouldn't return as a correct value. We're going to get dot total seconds underscore seconds. If that, since that gets the total seconds, we're going to divide it by 3600 so that we can get hours. 
So divided by 3600. And then I'm going to put that all into a parentheses here, just so that we can keep it clean. So then if that divided by 300, 3,600, that'll become the hours. So if that is greater than 1, which means if it's been more than an hour, then we can run the webhook. So I'm going to say is greater than or equal to 1. Then we want to trigger the webhook here. So I'm going to tab that so that we can indent it correctly. And then let's just let it load. All right, yeah. So now that worked. But since we want the last water, we can't just keep it as yesterday forever. So I'm going to update that to now because since we just watered it, then that would be the new last water. So here I'm going to say last underscore water equals date time dot now. And that will get now's date and time. And then let's indent that correctly. So here I'm just going to print like initiated water cycle or something. So I'm going to use the print function to print initiated water cycle. And then, yeah, there we go. So now we've successfully created a simple application to, first of all, check if the humidity is above 80. And then if it is, then it should use an if webhook, which we've already created in the UI. So it should connect to that and turn on our sprinklers. So there we go. Now the last thing we have to do is just check, test it out. All right, so I'm going to go to um, terminal so that we can actually run this. And since I've already set the flask app in my last video, all I have to do is type in flask run. So I'm going to run this and then let's open up the web page. But the web page should be the same as before. All we're looking for is to open it up so that we can actually run the program. And then now, if I if the humidity goes above 80, then it should start running the Ratio water sprinkler. So here I'm gonna put my finger on the humidity sensor so that it can actually go above 80%. And then now it should run our Ratio water sprinkler. So it, it will take a couple seconds, but then if I check terminal, then it should say initiated water cycle like we told it to. And yeah, there we go. So it's saying initiated water cycle. And then now, if I go to the Ratio app, then it should say that it's running on the sprinklers because we connected it from if. And now you can even see here, there's a little timer there that's saying that it is working. And I even got a notification saying that the, it'll quick run. So there we go. That worked. We've successfully created an application to connect if to Python so that we can water our lawn based on the humidity levels. So there we go. That worked. So there we go. We've created a two-part application so that we can connect ift to Python to connect our water to connect our humidity sensor to watering the lawn. Now I'm really having fun making these Raspberry Pi project videos, so stay tuned for more. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I'd love to help you out if you're stuck with any ift Python questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.